Hey friends, it's Melissa Morrow with Vintage Bee Design. And a few weeks ago, I went thrifting with my girlfriend Chris in Louisiana and I picked up this mirror. I paid $8.99, which you can clearly see on the mirror. And I am using Dixie Belle's Slick Stick to paint over this part where it looks like a photo insert goes. And I'm just painting right over the glass with the Slick Stick. One of the nice things about Slick Stick is it works on virtually any surface and is great once it's dry on glass and ceramics. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that space in completely and do two coats. While that is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some quick cast resin. This resin sets in about 15 minutes. All you do is mix equal parts A and B into a non-styrofoam cup and you mix it up for about 20 to 30 seconds. It starts off looking a little hazy and as you stir, it becomes clear. When it is all mixed up and you don't see any more swirls in it, you simply pour it into your molds. For today's project, I'm gonna use not only the hair, but also both the right and left parts of the laurel leaves. I'll use a popsicle stick in the laurel leaves along the points to make sure that I don't have any air bubbles. If you accidentally over pour like I did or you splash with your popsicle stick, don't worry, once it's dry, it's very easy to clean. To remove your resin projects from the mold, all you do is simply flip the mold over and sort of push them out. And they'll come right out as you can see and they have great detail. And you see this is where I had the overpour, so I'm just gonna use a um, box cutter, but you of course could use a craft knife or even scissors to cut these apart. And I'm just gonna cut some of these little overage bits. Um, really, you don't have to worry about them too much for this particular project, but if they bother you, they're very easy to trim. Next, we'll wanna attach it to our mirror in that framed area. And for this, I am gonna use E6000. I am just putting some on a popsicle stick and spreading it around the bunny. And then I will repeat this same thing with the laurel leaves. When you first demold your resin, it's gonna be very flexible. The longer that it cools and sits, it will become less flexible. But if you've waited too long, all you need to do is heat it up with a blow dryer or a heat gun. I found that the glass in this picture frame area kind of wobbled around in its space a little bit. So I was easily able to open it from the back how you would originally have put a picture in. And here again, I'm using the E6000 and I am simply going to glue this glass in place so it will no longer be able to sort of move around. Once I paint it, that backwards movement, back and forth movement could um, peel off the paint or make it sit improperly, scratch it up, something like that. So I wanted to be sure that it would be stationary in place. After letting my mold dry for about 30 minutes, I am ready to go ahead and paint it. I'm gonna be using Dixie Belle's Vintage Duck Egg and adding a little bit of a texture medium. The texture medium would be like a salt wash or sea spray, something along those lines. And of course, we offer all of these products on our website, vintagebedesign.com. And so I'm just gonna add a little bit of a texture medium, mostly because where the glass was under the hair, I want to have a little bit more texture. I don't want it to be slick. And I'm gonna apply a relatively thin, very lightly bumpy, this is not heavily textured, across this area as well as the entire gold part of the frame. I'm not gonna bother taping off the mirror because it'll be super easy to clean it later with some glass cleaner and a razor blade. Here's an up close look at what the texture medium with the paint looks like wet. I want this piece to have a lot of really yummy depth and texture. So I am going to use DIY paint in the color Prom Queen and I am using a stencil brush to dry brush this over all of the raised areas on the entire piece. Everything that was painted vintage duck egg is now going to get some Prom Queen dry brushed over it on the high areas. So the next step is I'm going to use DIY paint, white wax. This is hands down my favorite white wax. It is really soft and creamy and it gets into all the little nooks and crannies really well. And it also is easy to wipe off. It's all natural and it does not smell bad. So all of these are fantastic qualities. While I sell a lot of different brands, 
I have access to a lot of different product and I will say hands down the DIYs wax is my absolute favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of the frame and all of the bunny areas and then I'm going to wipe it back making sure to leave a pretty significant amount of the white wax in all the little nooks and crannies. I really want you to be able to see the white here but I do want to wipe it back enough that you can see the difference between the vintage duck egg and the prom queen colors as well. Again, this is about creating lots of layers and lots of depth. Now, I think it actually looks really beautiful as it is right now, but because this season is all about French elegant gold like Versailles, we are going to go ahead and add some of DIY Paint's Golden Rule, which is a golden wax. And again, it is one of my favorite waxes to use. And I'm applying it with a paintbrush over the laurel and the bunnies. But as I do around the frame areas, I'm actually going to go ahead and use my fingers. So I'll let you watch for a minute as I enjoy painting with this gold wax. And now, just to add a little bit more depth, I'm going to take some of DIY Paint's Dark Wax and go ahead and outline the laurel leaves and the bunny and create a little bit of shading. And you're going to see this is going to make a big difference in the end. And here is the finished project. Tell me what you think. Can you see all the different layers? Did you like it better in the gold or do you love this new gold Versailles French country look? I am totally in love. I was in love with this before it became trendy and now that it's trendy you're going to see me embrace it full-fledged. Did I mention that gold is going to be big this year? Not only gold but French, French and a little more French. French country being one of my favorite styles. I am so excited with Prima's first quarter release. I can barely stand it. We are fully stocked and have all of these ready to ship to you right now. They launched last week while I was gone and I'm so excited to share them with you. And I'm featuring a few of these in today's projects as well. So I hope that you love these as much as I do. And like I said, you can pick them all up at Vintage Bee Design dot com these are going to sell really fast because we know that prima's classic vintage labels are typically our best selling transfer so with five new vintage label packs all under twenty dollars they're going to be huge for my next project i'm going to take some candlesticks that i've had in my stash for way too long i've gone ahead and painted them with vintage deck egg the same color that i used on the frame and then i'm going to cover them completely in white wax much like the frame, as I'm wiping back, I want to make sure I leave a good amount of white left behind in the cracks and grooves. This is an incredibly simple and fast update to these candlesticks that go perfectly now with my mirror, making a beautiful set. I've added beautiful candle rings and half spheres to upgrade the look even more. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. I'm going to be using Prima's Cottontail mini transfers on my next project, but I wanted to throw this quickie in. This is a great project for springtime if you happen to have a riser or some other kind of cake stand that you use for decorative purposes. And personally, if you love French like I do, then the bunnies are year round. They are not just limited to springtime. Then I am going to give it a good two coats with Dixie Belle's satin 
top coat. This is going to protect the transfer and it's going to make sure that when I wash it, if any food gets on it or liquid gets on it, that it doesn't ruin the transfer. And so let me know what you think about this project. I know this is like a minute and a half project, but I think it's perfect for the springtime. Or like I said, if you just love bunnies and love the French, I, I think simple projects like this sometimes are overlooked at how great they are. This is a project I've been wanting to do for months and I'm excited that I'm finally able to do it. And for this project, I'm gonna use two different sets of minis. I'm gonna use sweet lamb and I'm gonna use these two little lambs here. And then I am going to use the cottontail minis. I have cut these hearts out with my Glowforge and I have painted them Dixie Belle's buttercream. If you're using DIY paint, crinoline would have been a good choice as well. And I am gonna have these hearts available on our website if you wanna try this project because everything else we sell online except for the hearts. So I'll go ahead and make some and put a link in the description if you wanna try this out. I can't believe how fun these were to make. And once again, I'm thrilled with the results. I've been waiting for months to try this out. I will warn you, these projects are a little bit like, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So if you wanna try this for yourself, don't get overwhelmed. Just take it piece by piece by piece, you know, inch by inch, it's a cinch kind of thing. I know those are silly, but this really applies. Step by step, this was just tremendous fun. And once again, I love how it came out. I was inspired by this project by a photo that I found on Pinterest at least six months ago. Their project, the Pinterest piece, looks like it was done with vintage roots mold by um, Redesign with Prima and probably some decoupage paper. But again, I'm gonna use transfers. So I'm gonna do four different ones that are all gonna be very similar, except of course for the transfer that I've used. Each of these will be available for sale, except for, I don't know, I might keep one. I'm not sure, I haven't decided that yet. So check out the link and see if I kept one or if they're all for sale at vintagebedesign.com. I've decided to use some paper clay for this project. You usually see me use resin when I'm working with the mold, but I am gonna use paper clay for this one, mostly because these have deep layers and I need to really be able to attach them to each other and sort of make them um, lumpy, bumpy, you know, ups and downs, molding into it, pulling off pieces, gluing it on. It just is a lot easier when you're gonna go for something ornate like this and something that's got multi-layers to use paper clay. And I've also made the decision to pull apart the leaves here and there and really customize this mold and the, the way the leaves are attached to fit each and every one of these bunnies. I had started out with the two carrots on the angle and then I add two mushrooms and then I add the radish in the middle and that gave me the perfect layering. I tried it originally without the mushrooms and um, with a little bit of a different configuration. This is obviously the third one that I'm working on. Uh, I wanted to kind of get the formula right, so to speak, and figure out exactly how I wanted this before I showed you on camera. But this is, this is in the end how I decided to layer them. And this layering technique and this bunny that I'm working on at this moment actually ends up being my favorite. It's funny because it was the least favorite choice of mine when I was picking out the transfers, but it ends up being my very favorite one. I think the, the simplicity of the bunny and kind of overlooking his stacks of um, food sources just came out really adorable. Now that these are completely layered, I'm just gonna let them sit and dry. My plan was overnight, but it ended up being three days later. And you can see that there is some cracking and I'm not gonna worry about that at all. An unexpected change that happened is that the transfers actually pulled and broke in some areas. So I did have to do a little touch up with paint at the end also. 
Now with a French tip brush, I am, uh, you could use the Klingon pointed sash as well. That would be a good choice. You want something with sort of a spear tip because you're gonna wanna work into all the nooks and crannies. I base coated all four of my hearts with two coats of Dixie Belle's buttercream. And now I have mixed a little bit of DIY's chocolate layered chocolate into my buttercream just a little bit. I'm trying to darken this just a hair because I'm going to layer on some low lights, if you will, some shadowing around the edges and over the top. And then here you can see what that looks like. It just sort of adds an additional dimension. With this part done, I'm gonna go ahead and give all of these hearts a nice coat of clear wax. The clear wax will set a nice base because afterwards my next step is going to be adding a dark wax. And I'm going to want to add the clear wax first so that it'll be easy to wipe back the dark wax. The paper clay is very porous. And so if I didn't add the clear wax first, these would just get very muddy and dark. They would not have the nice crisp brilliance that I want showing through. Incidentally, you could do this with a top coat and glaze if you wanted. So adding a satin top coat and then like a Java glaze by Dixie Belle would also be an option. And what would French be without a little bit of gold? So I am picking up my gold gilding wax by DIY and this is the golden rule. And I'm just gonna gingerly add this with my fingertips. I don't wanna add a ton on here. I just wanna add some so soft shimmer. Wow, that was hard to say. Some soft shimmer of the gold. And I'm just gonna do it on the root vegetables and then just the very outline of the heart. Now I've drilled two holes on the top of each one and I'm going to add some wire. This is 16 gauge wire, but 20 gauge wire would have been a little bit better. This was a little firmer in trying to swirl it. And I use needle nose pliers to make the little swirls that hold on. I've been doing this for decades to hang things and I like it much better than jute because you, know, you can have a little more control with that wire. Then I'm gonna simply add a beautiful rag bow to the top and trim it up, glue it in place because it gets a little floppy. And here is the final reveal. Let me know what you think. I had so much fun with these projects. I will leave a link in the description for everything you've seen today. And you can pick up both the finished products and all of the DIY supplies at vintagebedesign.com. I hope you had fun today with me and I will see you again next Sunday. Uh, happy crafting, guys. Hope you have a great week and a nice President's Day off on Monday if you get off work for it.